I haven't inhaled a show like I did this one in a very long time. The only reason I didn't watch the whole thing in one sitting was that the doctor had to make sure I didn't go blind. After I finished it, I vomited a bunch of notes into this document and immediately downloaded the light novels. I haven't read them yet, I want to get my thoughts on the show out first. So let's all get on the same page. Our POV character is Ray Taylor. She's just gotten isekai into the world of her favorite dating sim and is now relishing the opportunity to be face to face with her waifu, Claire Francois. The chemistry between these two is really good, which is important as that's pretty much the show's whole deal. Ray is a wonderful little goober. Before her second life, she was a lonely lesbian overworked in a typical office job. This game was the only place she found comfort for a while. She was hugely obsessive over this game. She has all the loot tables and story routes memorized and so is extremely happy to be kicking around in this game. She's just such a little chaos gremlin and I love her. She's super loud all the time and won't ever shut up, especially not when she's swooning over Claire. I said if you're gonna step on me, then do it harder! Claire is also a ton of fun. She's in some ways just a regular rich tsundere, but that impression quickly gets complicated. She does bully Ray, but attention gets drawn to how she never goes that far. She doesn't actually harm Ray or her possessions in any way. At first, she just kind of wants Ray to leave her alone, and after that, she's just trying to keep up appearances. Their dynamic together is so much fun to watch, but Ray's insistence quickly brings Claire to a breaking point, so they come to an agreement. Exams are approaching, so if Claire gets a higher grade, Ray will drop out of the school, and if she doesn't, Claire must fulfill one wish of Ray's. Because of the antics Harder. and the behavior of everyone involved, the show really leads us to believe that Ray is gonna ask for something romantic from Claire. Maybe a date or a kiss or something along those lines. But when the time comes, Ray only asks that Claire not give up no matter how hard it gets. Then a few episodes later, when trying out for the student council, this situation repeats again. And again, Ray asks for the same wish. Both times it catches us and Claire off guard, but it shows that there's really something going on here. Tonally, most of the show is really light and comedic, but there is always a foundation of sincerity that it's built on, and that's what allows everything else to function. This sincerity bleeds through every element of the show, and so it allows it to do things that I love to see, but still feel really weird to be watching in a Yuri Isekai, of all things. If you're like me, one of those scenes of sincerity and honesty is why you watched the show in the first place. I don't think I can do this scene justice. I'll just roll the clip. Ray, tell me, am I correct in assuming that you're what they call gay? Yeah. This show has an approach to queerness that I find so refreshing and lovely. Many other shows will have queer characters, many will be queer friendly, many will be themselves queer subtextually or allegorically, but I can't think of that many that use the words we do. I've seen characters say they don't like men, or they don't feel attraction like others, or that they don't care about what gender they are. In those shows, I don't know if I've ever heard someone declare I am gay, or whatever it may be, but here, that word is used pretty clearly. Clearly. If you're here on this channel, this probably reads as a kindergarten level education to you, but remember, this is an isekai. I'm honestly floored this is here. Sure, I already know what it's teaching in this moment, but I'm still glad something like this is here at all. And it's followed up really nicely as well. There's an honest conversation about what this means in a way that I think is kind of cool. The show has Claire do a small homophobia, calls her out, teaches her why it's wrong, and then has her apologize as much as Sundere can. And then from here on out, no one does any homophobia. Just that small difference in language changes the tone of the show so much for the better. This show is very gay on its surface, but it also has two main threads of subtextual queerness that really help the story and relationship chug along. As I've mentioned, Ray is in a game she's written fanfic for. She knows a lot about the plot and can therefore act in ways that are beneficial to her. But when a monster attacks the class, she just plays along like she would in game. At the end of this sequence, the player would be presented with the option of which prince they want to come save them. Since it's a dating sim, this would be a choice very important to the hypothetical straight woman playing this game, but that's not the situation we find ourselves in. Ray's opinion on the princes is entirely informed by whose route lets her see Claire the most. So restrained, forced to call for help, Ray calls the only one she wants to save her, Claire. And it works. This shouldn't be possible, but her love for Claire makes it so. As the story goes on, most events follow pretty closely to the game's plot, but Ray's actions start to change that. Some characters act slightly differently, some events start in slightly different ways. The world is creating a Claire route around Ray as she determinedly pursues it. 
Claire is a noble and Ray is a commoner. In some ways, this helps them grow closer. Ray is able to get a job as Claire's maid, but in most other ways, it drives them apart. Claire wants to be kind and fair, but she still has been very heavily influenced by her circumstances and needs people to see and treat her as a noble. Especially as it becomes apparent that they might actually get together, Ray becomes very aware of how difficult such a relationship would be. Even at points where they both want to get together, their class relationship complicates that. These two undercurrents add drama to the relationship and add some lovely flavor to the queer narrative being told. I have done no research into the author of this series, but they absolutely know what they are doing. They totally nailed it. So in a story like this, I think it's valuable for the show to use the word gay so willingly. There's no ambiguity with the goals of the narrative. The uniformly supportive cast cease to be accepting people and become allies. Mechanically, these would have the same exact effect in a story like this, but the emotional effect it has on me is massive. They aren't just well-meaning people who love our heroines. They get it. They understand. It really helps the tone of the show. It feels less like a narrative written by straight people about us, and more like a celebration thrown by and for us. The jokes it makes come from the inside, it's loudly signaling it's safe here and that we're among friends. That is super important because with a plot like this, anything that didn't yell at the top of his lungs would get very messy really easily. Our characters have just joined the student council together and it's explained what they are. In this world, monsters are attracted to magic stones, which the school has plenty of. So an additional duty the council has is to police the grounds and keep them at bay. That's why they're called the Academy Knights. No big deal, fits right into this fantasy school rom-com situation. It's the culture festival, so they decide to put on a cross-dressing cafe because this is a show for the queers and it's a grand old time. Ray and Claire take a break and discuss their relationship a bit and then we hear that a pro protest got heated, and a noble student burned a commoner one alive. These protests were for commoner nobility equality, and that movement had been growing in size quite a bit. The king had even decided to start organizing the kingdom by merit. That's how Ray is attending an academy for nobility in the first place. Naturally, this event causes the protests to grow in size, and our academy knights... Oh, um, uh, start to investigate the crime. So our cops go interrogate a marginalized man who has just been disfigured by a privileged one because he spoke his mind at a peaceful protest. This man initially refuses to speak to them, calling the nobles parasites who leech off the work of the commoners and the commoners serving on the force class traitors. I'm normally totally down for tone shifts like this. I love Carolyn Tuesday to death, for example. I love the idea of setting up a queer romance and then suddenly pulling the rug because actually it's not that easy. I love the sudden escalation into this arc. It helps it feel super visceral. The panic draws an intense contrast against the goofy little cross-dressing cafe we were just doing. This comedy isekai about lesbians just screamed a cab and plainly put all of its reasons for holding that belief. There's been enough hints at something like this going on so it doesn't feel too unexpected. It is a tone shift, but not one without setup. It's exciting thinking about what the story will do with these threads. The story is interested in class ideas. It keeps putting Claire in positions where she has to learn. Having her become a cop casually could be a useful tool for that, but it doesn't. So the story just feels kind of inconsistent. Does it think cops are bad or is it fun when our lesbians are cops? Is it more interested in asking questions of class or doesn't want to keep the status quo of the fancy academy? There's a lot of threads that get set up, partially followed through on, and then contradicted somewhere else. So Ray and Claire set out to solve the case. Why did the noble use his wand? Well, he didn't intend to. His wand was tampered with. Who tampered with it? It was the magic tool specialist on the council. Why did he set the incident up? He wanted to leave the country and a neighboring kingdom offered a way out. Why did he want to leave? Cause, cause he's boning his sister. Why is he doing that? This is still anime after all. Oh, the guy who got burned? Uh, we don't see him again. Did you, did you think he was important? So we have this arc. It's set up full of intrigue and it threatens to tip the status quo of the show and the world on their heads, but then nothing happens. Ray and Claire fight a chimera while arguing about tsundere's and okay, not gonna lie, that is great, but that's 
all this results in. A commoner hijacks a grassroots political campaign for personal reasons. None of our noble cast seems to think about this again, and that's that. The biggest impact this has on Claire is that the sister getting boned was her friend and servant. Her absence informs Claire's next arc heavily, so why did it choose to remove her like this? Our leads saved the life of a prince, earning an audience with a king, and it takes some serious negotiating for anything resembling social change to occur. At the very end of the show, there's a season two teaser that looks like a lot of this will be developed further, so I'm assuming that's all dealt with in the light novels, but again, I haven't read those yet. I am still only working with the incomplete product of the anime. Earlier I said how much I loved the explicit queerness of this show and how much value that added, but the show that tripped in its excitement to yell ACAB also accidentally implied some things about its queer characters I don't think it meant to. Most of the characters in this show are pretty asexual, not that kind, which can be kind of nice. I don't want to watch a show about lesbians made so guys can jack off, but there is a problem with that. Of the characters who like someone else, most get slightly flustered around their crush, and that's pretty much it. It's super light and fluffy anime comedy romance stuff. But there are two exceptions to this, Rei and Minaria. Rei is completely obsessed with Claire, and it's fine. She becomes her maid and it's fine, mostly. They go to a bath together and Ray helps her change. Like, Ray is not nearly as bad as... Uh, okay, well, most anime protagonists, but she does get a nosebleed. There are a few naked or underwear shots of Claire that get Ray very excited, and while they are rarer and aren't communicated in the same way as another show would, they do exist. Ray does get too excited to see Claire naked, and while she doesn't do anything to Claire, it's enough to make her feel uncomfortable. But this is an anime comedy romance, and this is our POV character who has to get bullied harder in episode one because it's only her thoughts we see, giving her some leeway is totally fine in this context, and she never does anything that objectionable anyway. Minaria, though, tried to suppress her interest in a servant, and, um, I'm trying to use the words of the show, she couldn't contain it anymore, burst, and she sexually assaulted her servant. Then she visited a bunch of brothels, became a sex addict, and now that she's in Bower, is expressing a desire to have Claire and defile her. And the school body spreads these rumors around to everyone. And when Rey wins their contest, suddenly Minaria starts acting exactly like Rey did at the start of the show. <laughs> Isn't this so funny? Now, I don't think queer shows, and especially sapphic ones, should inherently have to be respectable. If your story has sexual characters, go for it. I'm totally along for the ride. If your characters are bad people, that isn't inherently a problem. But I'm just pointing out a pattern in this show. The two characters who are explicitly queer are also the only two who have sexual interests, and the only two whose sexuality makes others uncomfortable. The sexuality in most of the queer characters is wrong within the context of the show. Minaria's sexuality is repressed and toxic, and Ray's is perverse and strange. Is this the case because the story has cool artistic ambitions, or because it's a funny joke sometimes? I'm sensing that I am in danger! That's what- Miss Claire, to react that way just because she's gay? It says more about your ignorance than it does her character. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, the show brings up why Rey acts like this. She's doing it as a facade because she can't imagine actually having her love reciprocated, but we don't see that developed a ton, at least not in what of the anime exists. There's not a lot of screen time, so choices were made on where to spend it. I understand they didn't want to spend all their time on this one point, but she spends time as a foil to a rapist in the final arc of this show, and that tips the scales pretty heavily. This all could be an interesting thing to do and explore, but it doesn't get the depth it would deserve. This is my reason for all my previous complaints. All these problems could make for incredible art, but to do heavy themes justice, you need to know why they're in the story. Class tension exists in this story because it helps the romantic tension between our leads. Class-based violence exists to stoke that flame and incite character development. But to do that, a commoner needs to be assaulted, riots need to start, but since the high school plot needs to continue, that movement gets astroturfed by the author. The development from this arc is good, but is that trade? off worth it? This is a story with what appears to be large ambitions, but either it's bad at telegraphing what will be developed further, or it never intends to do so. I think real quick before I wrap this up, a good comparison is Bridget. Is she a good trans rep? On one hand, her backstory is 
coated in anime garbage. It's kind of weird. On the other, whenever I'm depressed and dysphoric, I listen to the town inside me and I don't feel so alone. The things that literally happen in her story probably deserve some critique. People seem to not like it and it's theoretically possible one of them isn't just a transphobe, but her story nails what it feels like to be trans, along with so many small touches of her character design and music and everything, so those critiques don't stick. And Guilty Gear in general just has the best vibes possible, so Bucket is one of us. Anyway, with this in mind, think about Claire's sexuality or Ray's loneliness. I've pointed it some ways it stumbles, but those only matter because of how cool it was immediately preceding those issues. This has been a pretty quickly written script, it's only been a few days since finishing the show, but in articulating my icks, it hasn't soured. My critiques of the show have not ruined my opinion of it. All the parts I love have still stayed bright, I still love them just as much. Really, it's just made me excited to finish making this so I can go read the books, because I really hope that it will and believe that it can follow through with everything it's promised. If it does, this could easily be one of my favorite things maybe ever. And if it doesn't, at worst, this is an above average comedy romance. So I'm gonna go read it now. Bye.